Hey, what's up? And welcome to a little tour of all the guitars I'll be playing live at Camira's upcoming reunion shows happening here in Cleveland, Ohio, May 12th and 13th of 2023. I've prepared eight guitars for the show and I'm gonna walk you through every single one of them, tell a little bit of history maybe about the guitar, why I've chosen to use it. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty excited for this. A lot of these guitars haven't seen any action for a long time, so it was cool to break them out, plan it all out, clean them all up, restring them, get them all set up and ready for this day right here, or actually the big day is coming up, but still preparation matters. Let's jump right into it. This is a eight space boat here, and I plan on bringing eight guitars. You may say, Rob, there's only seven guitars in there. There is one missing, but more about that in a little bit. Uh, Kamira's catalog consists of 99.9% .9 drop C, drop B, and drop A tunings. The majority of that in drop C. So at any rate, I'm bringing two guitars for each tuning. Two C's, a main and a backup. Two B's, a main and a backup. And two A's as well, plus two additional guitars. The first being what I call the bus guitar. This is a beautiful LTD M1000 had this guy for a long time. It's an O2. And uh, it definitely did an extensive amount of touring with me as my main show guitar for the impossibility reason and self-titled cycles like 03 and 05 all the way through 06 where I got my first six string customs, the RA2 and RA3, at which point I kind of retired this to the bus guitar and what that means is it just lived on the bus all the time so I always had a guitar to jam on to warm up for shows with or it also live in the dressing room when those situations applied um, I tend to like to like get ready on the bus when possible just all my stuff's there and everything don't have to bring it all into the venue other guys like to get ready in the venue I like to get ready on the bus so it lived on the bus most of the time but there were certainly situations where it would go in the dressing room and other guys would play it and it created music for a lot of drunken nights and stuff so it's got some battle scars although it still looks pretty good for being an O2 over 20 years old still plays great and I've always loved the M1000s I really based my uh, my custom six strings the RA2 and 3 off this guitar which is some modifications that I liked and uh, it always had that look of the of the hammock guitars to me too those KHs so just pretty cool great guitars i could still get by with this thing any day of the week for any show and it would serve me well so i'll use it in the dressing room actually no bus for these shows as we're here from cleveland no need to tour around in a big vehicle so it will be spending some time in the dressing room there and will get me ready for the next guitar which isn't there because I just got it. I got a brand new six, six string that I can't wait to show off, but the unboxing video for that hasn't been filmed yet. So before I show that one off, I'm gonna unbox it and do a little video on that guitar specifically. So you'll see that coming up in a future video really soon here, but I have actually already unboxed it and strummed it and I love it, but I haven't put that video together yet for you guys. But in its place for the moment, I'm gonna give honorable mention to another guitar that I haven't broken out in a long time. This is also a 2002, and this is an LTD H307, one of my very first seven string guitars. And I prepared this for Matt DeVries, who just used it at last week's rehearsals, and I'll be using it at our upcoming rehearsals, and actually at the show live as his backup a, I believe. So this is gonna, you know, people coming to the show will see this one there, but DeVries is gonna be playing it, not I. But um, I am going to make a dedicated video for this guitar coming up here soon, so take a look. I broke it out, I don't know what, maybe I showed a picture of it or something, maybe over on Patreon, and dudes are flipping out about the teardrop headstock. I never realized that uh, there was so much love for this particular shape, or maybe it just looks kind of retro, and people like seeing it again. Maybe it's gonna make a comeback, maybe it is making a comeback, I don't know. But um, like I said, gonna do a detailed video on the H307 coming up here soon. In the meantime, let's have it fill the spot of the Mystery Axe that's uh, 
going to be a C guitar that I play on a few shows. But my main C for the show is going to be my beloved ESP Custom Shop RA3. For whatever reason, I still haven't made a dedicated video on this guitar, but a lot of history in this. This was one of my first customs I received in 2006. And oh, we got the ESP emblem covered there with my string changing dates and stuff on there, like I always do. Made in Japan, and this is what my RA600s were based off of. So after I got this guitar, I totally love it. Out of every single guitar I own, this is my favorite guitar. I get asked that a lot. What's your favorite guitar? This one will definitely go in my coffin with me, or if my son wants it after I died, he's got first dibs. But uh, yeah, I kind of plan for it to be buried with it. This guitar is money from top to bottom. Just plays, it plays itself. As a matter of fact, it plays me. It's dope. And uh, yeah, so I loved it so much that when it came time to make the signature series with ESP, we based the RA600s, which you'll see a couple of here in a moment, off this guitar. Almost all the same specs, um, but you know, the RA600s come off the production line and this is a, a one of a kind. Its twin is the RA2, which I do have a dedicated video on. And I played that guitar as my main C guitar in 2017 for Camille's reunion show there. Didn't bring the RA3 along for whatever reason. I don't know. Sometimes I like to just give certain guitars a little bit of love here and there. This one hasn't seen any action in a while. And after I set it up, and I was just reminded of how 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 much and why I love this thing. You just don't know until you play it. Um, yeah, that's it. The RA3. This is going to be my main C, and. You know, every once in a while, I'll switch out to the mystery and my backup C here. Well, this is getting tuned and so forth. Or if there's any problems, that's why it's always good to have a backup, at least one backup. So my backup for this show, and you know, I'll just break out on songs here and there, is one of my other favorite customs, the RA4. Take a look at this puppy. Unbelievable paint job. That's what makes this thing really stand out. Look at it across the pickup. Even the pickup ring is painted. Just so dope. I, for this, the RA4 and my RA5, I, again, this one, I don't know why I've never made a dedicated video on, but I have on the RA5, which is the same Strat style, Strat style body and Strat style headstock, which was kind of new to me. And after getting these, I realized I don't like these type of headstocks quite as much. I like the pointed and I prefer reverse like the RA600, that's kind of my favorite setup. The Alder M-style body with the reverse headstock, the, the uh, regular pointed ESP headstock is my favorite combination. But I wanted to try something different. I went through this little spout where, uh, you know, probably back in 09, 2010, I was going to some guitar shops while on tour and I kind of fell in love with a couple cool strats and I had never played a strat before. I was never into strats. I always just kind of thought they were like, I don't know, old rocker or country guitars or whatever, but I played a couple and they were butter, really some really high-end ones at a, um, a couple of cool guitar shops. And so I just got inspired by that. And when it came time to make another set of customs with ESP, I went with that design with the RA4 and RA5, both. You know, the RA4 and RA5 play fantastic, just like the RA3. There's nothing like the ESP custom shop guitars, but I will say, and I get asked about this a lot, the LTD, especially the 1000 and Deluxe series, I could swap those out with my Japanese made customs any day and be totally satisfied. They're all just the utmost quality, supreme craftsmanship, every last detail. I mean, every ESP owner out there knows that the ESP LTD brand is just the shit. This guitar, I was about to say is no exception, but it is an exception because it is exceptionally sweet. Just something about it plays so nice. It's got a couple battle wounds, which really bother me. I like my stuff to be pristine. And it was like that, that particular chip right there happened like day two after I had this thing. So it's just heartbreaking when that happens. I was talking to a guy the other day who was asking me about fixing up big chips and dents and paint and stuff. And I don't really have a solution for that, 
but I thought if I really wanted to, and I've thought about doing this with my very first guitar, which is like an Ibanez copy, it's called a Tenara, it's neon green, and it's got all these just beat up chips from playing as a kid, hitting it against the corner of my bed as I'm sitting there playing and stuff. So like this bottom corner of it, where near the corner where your bed would be over here is just destroyed. And I thought, how could I get this thing done? I thought about going to an auto body shop. You know, they can match any color paint. They do all that Bondo work, you know, with, you know, auto body and stuff like that. So anyways, let me know if, if anybody's ever done that out there, you know, had a guitar worked on at an auto body shop. And I do have a friend in the business too. So I think it's something I may inquire about eventually one day. So anyways, this is going to be my second drop C for the show. One last up close look there. The RA4 one of my prized possessions, and with that sick artwork from the Chimera album, I'm personally most proud of, our 2005 self-titled album. Next, we're gonna move into my B guitars, drop B. And the first is a special RA600, my signature series model, special because of that Chrome 81 in there, which really makes it pop, in my opinion. Chaos logo at the 12th fret. You guys have seen this. I wish there was a way for more of you guys to get these things. I know, well, I'm kind of sad and proud at the same time that they're so rare to come by these days, but just keep your eyes peeled and be ready to strike when one comes on the market. And guys are snagging them all the time. I love getting those messages, welcoming new people to the RA600 family. I couldn't be more proud of these things. Again, a fantastic playing guitar. They just sound great. Never heard a bad review about one. I'm proud to say, honored to have this thing. Love to make them again. ESP, if you're listening, if you're watching, there's a lot of guys out there who are going to comment right now and talk about how bad they want the RA600s to come back into production so they can get one. We got to do like, let's see, these came out in 08, I think. Yeah, this is an 08. This came out, I think the RA600s came out in 08. So right now will be the 15 year anniversary. So it's, it's kind of a little late to do like a 15 anniversary. And I don't want to wait for 20. Let's just do a new model, the RA601 or the RA700. I got some color designs in mind. So come on ESP, let's do it, man. That one's going to be, I'm going to start with as my beat. And then my backup be another RA600. This one's got the, the stock black 81. It also comes with some fingerprints. Should have polished this first. <laughs> Damn. But um, this one is slightly unique because one of my techs, I think Grizz, did you do this? Um, swapped out for these locking tuners and did a, a black and a chrome and a black and a chrome. And we named this one Black Tooth because of that. This is also an extremely special guitar for one reason that is somewhat bittersweet. And that's that this guitar was displayed in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame for a few years. And then after I left Camira, it was kind of a bad, a real bad time for me in life, leaving the band. Um, anyways, I just didn't know what the future was gonna hold at that time. And I ended up contacting the Rock Hall and going and getting this guitar back. And I took it out of there, which was just a huge mistake in hindsight because this could still be there and trying to be as, say this as humbly as possible to say that you have a guitar in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame means something, I think. And now I don't, but I did. So I did, you know, I don't even want to claim that, <laughs> you know, I did have, why don't you anymore? Oh man, they kicked me out. They didn't, I took it out myself, but I regret that. Uh, so Rock Hall, if you're listening, hit me up. I'd gladly bring this back and put it back on display there. There's some other cool Camira memorabilia there, maybe like a drum head every once in a while, get a picture from a fan or something who's at the Rock Hall and sees the Camira stuff, so that's cool. I think Mark's dreads were in there for a while too, but he might have went and got those, or maybe they weren't in there, maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. But another gorgeous RA600, 
that I'm proud of. B2. Oh, can you see that? All right. All right. Moving on to the seven strings for our drop A tuning. This time, some of you might say, why aren't you using the RA1? Which is my very first ESP custom seven string. Uh, and the reason is, is that I've got a couple Evertunes to play here. And with our, our pass out material, pass out of existence material, which is our, album, our first major label debut, which is all in drop A. There's one drop G song on there. Like earlier in the video when I said that 99.9 .9 of our stuff is made up of drop C, B, and drop C. Um, there's one song on there, the one we did with Stephen Carpenter, that's in drop D, or G, my bad. Um, anyways, on that album, I really didn't do any whammy bar stuff. I was playing Floyd's at that time, along with the H307, wherever that went. Oh yeah, which just has a fixed bridge. But I also got an MH307, which does have a Floyd. I got that in the other room. Um, but I wasn't really using the Floyd. And Hagar, Kamir's original guitarist, and I used to block our Floyds like a lot of guys do back in the day. Um, so there really isn't a need for a tremolo, a floating tremolo, on those Pass Out of Existence songs. So that is a perfect scenario for the Evertune, which a lot of you have heard me say, I just consider a specialized tool that is perfect for the right job. So obviously in songs, especially like ours, like the Venom Inside, that that uh, that verse riff, da -da 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 -da. I can never use an Evertune on a song like that because I need a whammy bar. But on these Pass Out songs, the Evertune's perfect, keeps you in, in tune perfectly, perfect for live situations, all that. And this is my MH1007 with the Evertune bridge. Got a dedicated video on this guy, if you'd like to check it out. Also have an, an Evertune video I've made, doing a complete setup on this guitar, everything, intonation, string, or string change, intonation, all that good stuff working with the Evertune Bridge. But this guy is a beauty, another one that just plays fantastic. This is a 2020 and it looks money. So this is gonna be my, the A I'm planning on starting with. But as some of you guys recently saw in another dedicated video that I just put out last week, I acquired this bad boy which maybe I'll start with, or maybe it'll be my backup. I haven't decided yet. It's fresh. I don't know it quite as well yet, but it is money. And this is one of the Evertune exclusive M1007Bs. This isn't actually my guitar. It's a friend of mine, Sam, a member over on Patreon, who had this guitar sent to me directly from Evertune so that I could set it up and demo it in a video and then send it to him. But Sam was also graceful enough to give me the offer to play it at the Chimera shows before I send it to him. So that's what I'm going to do. And I can't wait. Another one that just sounds and plays and feels great. I love everything about this guitar. The locking LTD tuners. The custom gold high tension saddles. And just that money paint job. I mean, come on. That binding, super sick. Just an ultra rad guitar. And so that does it for that. Those are my 2023 live guitars. Did I miss anything here? Just a quick recap. The M1000 bus guitar, secret guitar for my other, another drop C guitar, but in its place is the H307 that Matt DeVries is, is gonna be playing. The RA3 as my main C. RA4 as my backup C, a pair of RA600s for the drop B tunings, and a pair of Evertune equipped M1007s. Actually, this is an MH1007 and an M1007 for the drop A stuff. Very proud of this stuff. I feel so blessed and grateful. Thank you to ESP and for all you guys, all the support over the years without which 
I wouldn't be sitting here right now talking to you guys, and I certainly wouldn't have this fantastic, fantastic collection of guitars. We got a whole other row up there and plenty more behind the wall. Not trying to gloat, just talking to the other guitar lovers out there who I know we all love to collect and get as many as we can get our hands on and just baby these suckers. Play with them, talk about them, work on them, strum them, show them off, all that good stuff. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. Number one, if you like this video. Number two, if you'd like to see more from me. Number three, hit that notification bell so you can see when I demo the H307 and that secret guitar that I'm talking about this whole video. It's something special, at least something special for me that I think is really cool that I've had my eye on for a really long time. Appreciate everybody tuning in. If you're interested in getting even closer, getting some guitar tabs, behind the scenes stuff, and early looks at my videos, consider joining my Patreon campaign. Take a look at patreon.com slash Rob Arnold World. And my guitar DVD, which I'm always mentioning, which I think could really help you if you're looking to improve your guitar playing skills from soloing, songwriting, riffing, arranging, all that kind of stuff. Just $24.99, free worldwide shipping, comes with a bunch of extras like some cool guitar picks, stuff like that. Please make sure you check that out. And don't forget about my brand new solo album, Magnitude, with ex Camira drummer Andals Herrick on the kit from back when he recorded a few years back and he was still feeling good. His performances are rad. It's an all instrumental record that I recommend you check out. Give it a look here on YouTube or pick up a CD or on any of the uh, streaming networks, networks, streaming services that you're a part of. It's available everywhere. Thank everyone so much for watching, tuning in, supporting and all that. I'm Rob Arnold signing off and I'll see you soon.